In the previous video, we have established that the imaginary number i is equal to the square root of negative 1. We can also multiply a real number with the imaginary number i to get another imaginary number. We can also rewrite square roots of negative real numbers as imaginary numbers with the formula square root of negative a is equal to the square root of a times i for all a greater than 0. But what happens when we multiply an imaginary number with another imaginary number? So let's go through the powers of i. If we have i to the power of 0, that just equals 1, since any number raised to the power of 0 is always equal to 1, and this applies to imaginary numbers i to the power of 1 is equal to i, since any number to the power of 1 is equal to itself. So what happens when we have i squared? Well, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, so i squared is just equal to the square root of negative 1, all squared. When we have the square of a square root, we end up with the number inside the square root. So the square root and the square cancel out, and this just equals negative 1. So i squared is equal to negative 1. Notice how this is different from the square root of a square of a number where the square would be inside of the square root. So i cubed is equal to i squared times i by exponent laws, which equals negative 1 times i, since we just worked out that i squared equals negative i. This simplifies to negative i, so i cubed is equal to negative i. i to the power of 4 can be rewritten as i squared times i squared by exponent laws, which equals negative 1 times negative 1, which equals 1, so i to the power of 4 is equal to 1. So this is what happens when you multiply the imaginary number i with each other. You get these integer powers of i. So now we'll notice a pattern if we continue computing the powers of i. I'll list the powers of i from 0 to 4 at the top as reference. So i to the power of 5 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i to the power of 1, which is equal to 1 times i to the 1, which is just equal to i to the power of 1. i to the power of 6 is equal to i to the 4 times i squared, which is equal to 1 times i squared, which is just equal to i squared. i to the power of 7 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i cubed, which is equal to 1 times i cubed, which is equal to i cubed, and i to the power of 8 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i to the power of 4, which is equal to 1 times i to the power of 4, which is just equal to i to the power of 4. So if we look at these values, we'll notice that the powers of i with a difference of 4 in the exponent have the same value. For example, i to the power of 6 is equal to i squared, because the exponents have a difference of 4 since 6 minus 2 is equal to 4, Similarly, i to the power of 7 is equal to i cubed, since 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. So this pattern actually continues on forever, and we can see that the powers of i repeat themselves in a cyclical manner if we continue listing out values. For integer exponents, the powers of i only have four distinct values, and any powers of i with integer exponents can be rewritten as either one of i to the power of 0, i to the 1, i squared, or i cubed. This cyclical property comes from the fact that i to the power of 4 is equal to 1, so adding any multiple of 4 to the exponent doesn't change the value, since it's in effect multiplying the entire value by 1. So the formula for simplifying the powers of i is i to the power of n is equal to i to the power of n plus 4k, where k is an integer. But you don't have to worry too much about this formal notation, and just know that if you want to simplify an exponent, we need to divide the integer by 4 and look at the remainder. By the way, this formula works, even if n is not an integer. So let's say we have i to the power of 14. To simplify this, we need to divide 14 by 4 and work out the remainder. So if we divide 14 by 4, we get a remainder of 2. And this means that i to the power of 14 is equal to i to the power of 2, which is equal to negative 1. Notice how 14 and 2 differ by 12, which is a multiple of 4, which is why i to the power of 14 and i squared have the same value. So whenever we have i raised to some exponent, and we divide that exponent by 4, the remainder is always the exponent that we are looking for. So since the remainder was 2 in this case, i squared is the answer. So how about something like i to the power of 23? Well, if we divide 23 by 4, we end up with a remainder of 3, 
So this means i to the power of 23 is equal to i cubed, which is equal to negative i. What about i to the power of 100? If we divide 100 by 4, we end up with a remainder of 0, which means that 100 is a multiple of 4. So the remainder is 0, which means i to the power of 100 is equal to i to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. So whenever the exponent is a multiple of 4, i raised to that exponent always has a value of 1.